our spiritual side of investigation leads us to communicate with all types of spirits, including the unwanted spirits. I mean, this is this is a very serious situation, and I mean, to have anybody live here after us, it, you know, it's dangerous. And I was wondering, is there any way that we can cleanse the house? Get you can get rid of whatever's here. So, to you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, in you I trust. All the Holy Spirits and angels to remove any negativity or unwanted spirits from this room. Most spirits are welcome. Occasionally we will encounter spirits that are unwanted and we need to show them the door. It been. has been actually. I think our last investigation was in September. No, it, it was like in August, wasn't it? This will be my third investigation with Paranormal Endeavors, and it'll be Jeremiah's second. And we're both pretty excited because we're going to uh, one of Eric's friends' place, Chris. I'm not quite as excited as I was before the first investigation, but that was just because that was my first one. Um, I certainly am looking forward to going to the location and seeing what is going on, what kind of activity is there. So what's the story in the owners of this house and the property we're going to? Well, this one's kind of unique, um, kind of like the Indiana one where Jesse was a friend of mine. Um, this one's also connected through a friend who um, had me over and he said his house actually has some activity on it. There hearing voices out loud, footsteps going up and down stairs sometimes. Well, it was interesting to see how the investigation went with Jeremiah and Alex. They're both um, pretty inexperienced in terms of professional investigating out in the field. And it was kind of to my surprise, it seemed like Jeremiah seemed to take lead. His fascination seemed to, at least openly, drive him even harder than with uh, Alex. And I seen that at Barney, uh, not in the last case, where it just seemed like Jeremiah seemed to kind of take lead. Um, activity outside too. Um, sometimes looking out the window, and there'd be a face right there looking back at you, that kind of stuff. Sounds interesting. I can't wait to endeavor. <laughs> so tacky. <laughs> some activity in the house. Um, when nobody's home but one person will have footsteps upstairs, um, stuff slamming upstairs. The upstairs closet, we've got a little lock on it. You hear it rattling. Um, when nobody's, when one person's here or if you're just upstairs, you know, going to sleep or whatever. Um, my fiance Austin, uh, when we first moved in, uh, I was going somewhere and she heard knocking on the door and went to the door, nobody there. Um, she went back to the bathroom and she heard the door slam. She came out again. Nobody was around the house, nobody was in the house. Well, go ahead and show us some of the places where um, 
what's the activity or a lot of it that you've experienced or where it may be originating from in your opinion? Okay. Well, a lot of it's upstairs, so just follow me. This bedroom, you'll feel it a lot. It's the uh, one, and it's the uh, coldest room in the house. This room, you'll get constant cold spots, especially right where I'm standing. Um, this seems to be generating the most of the cold. Uh, we've narrowed it down that it's not from this window. Um, when it's windy outside, whatever, you can come to this window. There'll be no wind pushing in, no cold air pushing in. Um, this cabinet has slammed once. We've heard things rattling in here. We had somebody that used to stay in this room who uh, had said that she was being choked once, you know, in her sleep. Um, this is uh, the closet that we heard rattling. Like nobody's around it and you'll hear, and then you'll find it like this. And we, as you can tell, this one shuts all the way, this one doesn't. But, like I said, nobody touched it. Nobody was around it. We were downstairs. This back room is random cold spots. Again, the giant window, but no air pushes through that window. Um, we have in here our attic access. And uh, you'll feel a cold spot walk from that other bedroom through here and right into here, we think it's possibly going into the attic. We don't really know. Ever been in so the you, attic? No. So you track the cold spot? Like yeah, you follow we've, it? we've tracked it once. Hmm. And then... So I might stick someone up there later. All right. And you can for us for that. <laughs> and then my bedroom, we've had... Um, I've woken up a few times and uh, actually seen a shadow standing here with hair, watching over Austin as she sleeps. That's happened about three or four times now. We walk. I walked in here and had, you know, Maggie, my girlfriend's cat, laying here on the bed, and just you could see her uh, firmly, like it's being touched, but it's not from you know wind, anything. Uh, the windows. Uh, this window works. This window is plastic off. So. so you say you're spiritually sensitive? Oh yeah, I'm. Uh, I can uh, feel them, sometimes see them, but uh, I can talk, They, I can allow them to talk through me, um, so. Have you ever done that in this house? Oh yes, um, me and Eric had actually done it uh, two or three times here. This investigation was set up actually through a friend of mine, um, he basically started talking to me about things that were going on in his residence. We started talking about that, and it was kind of interesting that I found out that he had some paranormal research experience before. Endeavors um, taps into the spiritual side of things too, and that to me is really, really interesting. Um, I'm pretty spiritual, but I'm not sure what I believe. I'm not sure what I believe in. Um, part of this, I think, may help me figure that out. Um, I'd like to figure out if there is a spirit lingering around, um, why are they? And is it a spiritual reason why they're there? Um, I hope that I can learn a lot from Eric on the spiritual side of things. So this is a cellar. Anything that you know happened in here or heard anything? Uh, not, not that I've known that yes. happened in here. Um, our pilot light went out, uh, well, a while ago. <clears throat> and I uh, came down here to turn back on. Uh, you hear, like, uh, the first time you heard, like, uh, let me show you this, like a uh, sweeping. And of course, this hasn't moved. This hasn't been swept. That wasn't moved. Uh, really, I, just minor things when you're down here.
So uh, when you come out here at night, I, I'm a smoker, I come out at night, um, you get a really distinct smell of kerosene. Um, over here in this back corner, you can actually see, not now because my truck's in the way, um, like a glow of like a kerosene lamp. A black trench coat, black hat, staring in. You can't see his face because, you know, it's covered up like this. You can really only see his eyes. How many times have you seen that figure? I would say, um, from what I've been here, from the, to I know, um, at least three to five times. About three to five times. Now, do you pick up, you think it's the guy, the spirit that's inside the house, or is it a separate entity? It's separate. Oh, it's completely different. Um, the guy that's inside the house, um, as soon as that front door opens, you know, if he's downstairs, he's right back up in the in one of these rooms. Will he stay there, though, as long as you don't go outside? Um, if you watch him through the, the glass in the door, he'll stay out here all night. But you now, open is, the door... Is it, like, <laughs> is it like clockwork, like when he shows up? It's usually about 1.30, 2 o'clock. On this case, we were given the green light to primarily do spiritual side of investigation. So it'll be really fascinating in this case to see how Alex and Jeremiah both uh, handle that as they didn't really have much experience in the spiritual side a whole lot yet. But if you, if you look back in the Mafia times, that's what they would do. They'd shut the door and they'll stand outside the safe house and wait for somebody to open the door, ask the code, and that's when they'll walk in. That way they know, because there's a certain code that they use. got there it took a lot longer than I thought it should have taken to get all of our stuff set up and I think this is something we really need to work on we hadn't really gone over the setting setting up process I think it was like a month and a half since we'd done that so I was a little rusty Jeremiah really hasn't had much experience at all with it so I think that's something we really need to work on setup seemed to drag on forever we got there unloaded and it still seemed like even after training uh, the fellas on how to unload things it still seemed like I was taking lead on the setup so there was still room for improvement when it comes to setup and tear down so we could definitely get that done a heck of a lot faster than what we did here so I'm hoping the night will go better Now we're going to see baseline EMF and temperature uh, measurements. So, what are you going to do with that? Um, just aim several different locations in the room and um, try to find the room's kind of baseline for what's normal. We might check it several times throughout the night. No EMF in there. What's the attic showing? That door. 62. Okay, 62. Right. Yeah. Uh, about 61, 62 degrees. Okay. 62. 65. 65. I think I'm putting it. Is it too high? Is it too much floor? No, I you can have quite a bit of room. How long have you been here? your name if there's anybody here with us right now and you're able to give us some kind of a sign um, could you go ahead and you can 
walk up and down the stairs. Um, you can have your picture taken if you want. There are several different items throughout the house. If you're lurking around to try and give us some kind of a sign, you can even give us footsteps, make noises. Switching spots. I want you to see if you can stand here. You don't need to necessarily look directly out, but kind of have it out of peripheral. Just kind of looking, having, keeping an eye out there. Because we could be expecting company. I just caught a. I heard. Did you hear it? I heard what? Did you, can you hear it too? Crystal clear. And there's nothing out there. No, uh, living car, no physical car. It's like a phantom car. It was right outside. I mean, it was clear as day that it was in the car door. We were told about a car door, that there's a legend that says um, you would hear a car door. I've never heard anything like that where it's like, okay, you go to this house, you're going to hear a car door tonight. And I was waiting for that. I was like, okay, I want to hear this. And a couple of times, clear as day, I heard a car door shut. And it, it, it almost freaked me out. After we heard the, the car door, the first thought for me, at least, was we got to go outside. Is there somebody parked um, that someone may be stopping to get out of their car? We wanted to figure this out. So we went outside to investigate the surrounding area, and there was nothing. There wasn't a car in sight, aside from our cars. We were given the name Char. If that is indeed some individual who may be lurking here, could you stand forward and give us some kind of a sign of your presence? Well, temperature changes are great, but also we need a little bit more than that, and I know we can do it. You can give us some noises, you knock on walls for us. Maybe you want to finish the shave and haircut tune. Let me go ahead and knock on something for that. Upstairs. I thought there was. I heard two bangs. I, I thought I heard something I heard upstairs. Faint. Yeah, it was really faint. We got a response knock when we did the, the typical and we got the response and that was pretty cool for me because that was the first time I'd, I'd heard anything like that happen so it was a pretty good start to the night. The first experience of the night was knocking. Um, I didn't hear it myself but Eric and Alex heard it. And at this point I realized there is something going on, there is activity. Is there something you want from the people who live here? For the science part of this, we're going to go outside real quick. Let's see. Absolutely nothing. Open it up and shut it at various different speeds. And you guys will hear it from inside and tell me what it sounds like. Okay, car door. That was pretty loud. That's what it sounds like. How'd that sound? Did that sound similar? Yeah, I think uh, the one we've heard is a little fainter, but it sounds pretty similar. Okay, I'm going to shut it a little bit louder now and see if it's too loud. Yeah, that's way louder. Okay, so I'm going to do a softer one more time. So we must narrow it down to, it must have been like a soft shot like this. I'm going to do it one more time. Thank you. Do you two want to go upstairs within sight of each other? Do 
you have a problem with the people that used to sleep in this room? The ceiling is 56, 57 degrees, and the walls in here are pretty warmer and down to 52, 53. So your stairs closet by the attic. Mm -hmm. The closet itself is 52, 53 degrees, and the ceiling is 57, 58. Okay, so it's definitely changed. That, yeah, that doesn't make any sense because the ceiling should be colder since the attic. Would it change that much? You know, like how much the room itself could was have gotten since we between planted. 57 and 60, and then the closet was down to about 52, 53. I say it's time to probe in the attic. Three. What is it now? 55, 56. Okay. Well, who's gonna open the hatch? I want you to do the honor since it's your hatch. Are you gonna lift me up to open it? I'm not that tall. It's warmer now. Alright, I got an idea. Uh, somebody is. I don't want stuff falling down on you. Okay, yeah, it's falling. Oh, God. You're not the lightest cookie. Thanks, you call me fat. <laughs> but where are you going there? Oh, jeez, there's a layer of crap. Okay, drop it. That's after this. That's right that's in my eye. Yeah. I don't think we want to go up there then. Nope. Alrighty, well, I'm thinking... Are we going to get into the dude's voice thing? Later. Possibly. Maybe. I might even do the um, thing I do. Ooh, ooh, you been dowsing right Yeah. Okay. You want me to get my phone out? Yeah, let's go ahead and... If you want to try that, let's try something new. You guys haven't seen this before. It's kind of a kind of a rip-off from the Ovilus program, which is a device that... It cost me a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Supposedly allows uh, spirits to manipulate it enough to have it pronounce words. Oh, I've seen that in ghost time. Uh, and so we're going to try that now. Blue one's the lowest. Here. Did someone just take a deep breath out? No. No. Sounded like it was by you guys. So this has a little radar thing on it that has little blips and bleeps and, and stuff on it that uh, come up when there's a the different colors. ill. It's great. Um, the different colors show the levels of energy. Mm -hmm. Are you able to stand in the middle of this room next to this device so blink a red light? Engine. Engine. It'll let you know, or let us know that you're here. And if uh, we are your audience, then hopefully you can give us a show by showing your presence, by making a sound or something like that. It's kind of hot down here. Can you change the temperature and make a cold spot somewhere near one of us? I'm thinking I'm going to step it up just a little bit into the spiritual side of things, just a bit, not extreme, but I'm going to start um, things that randomly come to mind, I'm just going to say them out loud. Um, done this, uh, well we did this, remember Alex did this at uh, Indy, Indiana, and uh, certain things triggered some stuff, and we got some EVPs, or electronic voice phenomenon because of it, and the recordings later. So, lady, dress, immense, baseball, did you, did you just move Eric? No. I just 
saw a shadow on that window. So did I. I've been seeing it. Me too. <laughs> I thought it was you. On the window behind me? Yes. Yeah, that's where I saw it. Or is it like on the window? It almost looks like I somebody's it was somebody. reflection outside walking by. Yeah. Yeah. It's the CD. The theory is the more sound that you give them to work with, the more you hear. With your own ears, not just EVP. So but sometimes they can mess with. Did you ever harm anybody? Yeah, I've had people come up to me and say, "Did you ever harm anybody?" something. Jeremiah had a pretty interesting experience. He was supposedly touched. He went over by the, um, the stairwell and because Chris and Eric told him that I think there's something over there. Go stand over there and see if you can feel the same thing we're feeling. So he went over there and he said he kept feeling something on his leg and it just kind of kept creeping up his body. What I'm doing right now, do you see anything on the camera? Not yet. I'm going to move the... I'm starting to get light in the head. That's why I'm here. I'm going to move the uh, earth chi into you, the good chi around, and uh, take the bad chi out. Okay? I'm getting dizzy and light in the head. Good point. Eric, it might need to stone because it's really strong. Okay? So I walked over to the staircase and I was standing there. And to think back, it's hard for me to remember a lot. It's almost like it was a dream that you start thinking about it, but you start forgetting it at the same time. And what I remember is, I remember my right calf started tingling and it got numb. And at this point, I just started feeling really, started feeling really weird. I felt like I was stuck. I wasn't particularly scared, but I felt a lot of sarcastic humor. I, I kept smirking. Um, I was kind of being an asshole. And it, I recognized that this was happening and I knew it wasn't me being myself. This is just pretty much uh, removing them. How many skips grab a hole? <laughs> just one. Is this your first time being touched? Yeah. That's why. Nice Did you say? Okay, so what, what, ha so what happened? So what happened? You'll be fine, but it's just that what happens here is they try to do the fear thing and he tries to uh, put kind of thoughts to try to intimidate you or, or mentally break you down. Um, why did it start once he went to the stairs, though? Because he was over here. Oh, the spirit was? Which one is it? I'm thinking it's... The Edward Predominantly one? the man. And he doesn't really like to be pushed. I just got it. He's in here. Alright, so what we're doing, or what I'm about to do here, is this is more <coughs> the spiritual side of investigations. This is a form of a channeling, some people call it. Um, it's a form of, um, form of communication with potential uh, spirits or beings that are in the in the area. Basically what this specific one is called, it's been nicknamed the human dowsing rod basically, where my arms basically are up. I think it reached the end. Oh yeah. darn. Which is which is good for <laughs> what you're gonna do. Yeah. So sad. Which the arm uh, arms are kind of up and you just have to see. Uh, you see what's going on here. 
human dowsing rods. This is something that Eric has told me about this whole time, but he's never done it. I keep telling him, I want to see it, Eric. I want to see you do this human dowsing rod thing, and he'd never do it. Finally, he did it, and it was pretty cool looking, gotta admit. It's time to try the human dowsing rod. I know Alex has pressured me to do this for quite some time. This is part of the spiritual side. It's a form of a channeling, basically, where it's really hard to explain, but I get in a relaxed state, and instead of using actual dowsing rods, which are used to uh, locate energies, um, and they can respond to fluctuations in electromagnetic field with an actual scientific EMF meter side by side, Sometimes the readings have been known to match up to the dowsing rods. I'm still trying to understand it myself, but I've gotten some pretty cool evidence out of it, especially at the school. I went there and I had some photos that were taken of me while I was doing human dowsing rod, and there seemed to be shadow uh, or shadow figure moving in over my head when I was doing it. What you first do is you just have to get really relaxed. Alex, if you're still over there, it's you. What's the significance of where his arms are moving? It's, um, it's like dowsing rods. It's the energy drawing his arms to a certain degree. Does that mean they're over by me? And over yeah, here. <laughs> They're in both places. It's cold over here. Mm -hmm. I felt I did kind of feel comforted. It was weird. I felt almost like a you know a loving motherly embrace. The spiritual side is probably the most interesting to me, but it's also the side of the paranormal that I'm most skeptical about. I'm not sure if I buy into it, but I'm certainly opening my mind a lot. When Eric was a hu being the human dowsing rod, I. I didn't feel too much activity, but I felt like there was there was a presence walking around. Like it almost feels like somebody's embracing me. Mm -hmm. And see, this is where Eric wanted me to stay quiet to see what you guys get. Because he's a lot got of both times, arms over at him. I'm gonna break out. I'm claustrophobic. Yeah. Well, give me a second. So, now you guys can talk about th that last time, how did everybody feel? I felt like someone, something was trying to come after me again. Yeah. I'm just really drained right now. Just... Yeah. Can you go video that out the window? Me? Why are you crying? Oh, it's back on. Is anybody doing it? Can you video it this time? There's nobody. There's nobody out there. I can't really see. Yeah. Motion lights going up. At this investigation, I started to question whether or not Jeremiah and Alex really should be put together. I know that Jackie couldn't make it on this one because of a death in the family. It was unfortunate. I really could have used her on this one. 
Uh, however, only because I think it would have been great to have someone else who is uh, a bit more experienced in the field, and especially on the spiritual side. Yeah, that's it. What we were talking about uh, before the investigation, um, just wanted to bring that up to you again. Uh, what do you think about me possibly joining a group now that, you know, we've talked about it and... Chris then approached me privately, reminded me of his experience in the past in the paranormal, and I got to witness how he handled this investigation as a client. And really, as Endeavors is known to have clients be present for the investigation. A lot of time it would be a mistake not to have that as an option, at least, to have them present, because a lot of the activity may happen around just them. Sometimes it's the people that might be haunted and not the location. Well, I have um, kind of hung out with you here and kind of, you know, um, kind of did the cemetery thing and stuff like that for the last couple of months. I'm, I wouldn't have any problem with it. I really would like to have you kind of shadow us maybe a few more times before you officially be a part of it, but uh, I think it wouldn't be a problem. I think the guys would like you, so yeah, definitely. I'll think about that. All right, well, we just wrapped up, um, about ready to leave here, but it's been an interesting night, um, both uh, scientifically and, of course, uh, the spiritual side of things as well. Um, but we have even the evidence side of stuff to go over yet, and we'll go over that and get back to you with the findings, of course. And um, until then, we'll just stay in touch. Thanks and, for coming. Uh, it was a nice night. Thank you. Kind of another disappointing factor of the night is it seems like the guys forgot to take pictures upstairs um, and during the tour it was specifically advised where the activity was happening, where the hot spots were and um, I sent them up there with cameras and we didn't really get any pictures. There was some stuff we forgot to cover. Uh, we didn't get hardly any. I don't think we got any uh, pictures of the upstairs, which was, I don't know, that just kind of slipped our minds, I guess. But Erica said something about having me and Jeremiah do investigations separate for the next ones, just so we can be with more experienced people. I'm still kind of flustered right now. Yeah. Like, I've never experienced being touched. It was very, very intriguing, but I'm just kind of at a loss for words. Yeah. There's a lot I, I'm sure I'll come up with after a couple of days, but it was, <clears throat> yeah. It was odd, but at the same time, it was kind of exhilarating. It was yeah. weird to see you not acting like yourself. That was pretty, you just kept smirking. But like, it was just weird thinking. Like, it almost didn't feel like it was me smiling. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't feeling humor. I wasn't feeling any reason to be funny or, or I didn't have a reason to laugh I just could not stop yeah did you have any thoughts that weren't your own or anything it almost feels like I had a dream like the more I think about it the more I forget like I don't know if I felt thoughts that weren't particularly mine but mm -hmm. I I certainly didn't feel like myself I mean this is my first real paranormal experience I've ever had and you would yeah. think Wow, I'm going to be terrified, I'm going to be scared, but I wasn't scared at all. Um, well, I went and stood in the same place that he was standing when he got touched, and uh, that was when you were doing your human dowsing rod oh, thing on the yeah. floor. What did you think of that? It was the first time I showed you that live. I thought it was pretty <laughs> interesting. Yeah. What, like, what kind of state are you in when you do that? Well, I just get really relax first, try to wipe out um, any kind of thoughts, concerns, problems of your own for that day, just it's a, kind of a meditation thing first, and then get into the um, uh, clearing that out, opening the mind for anything else in that environment to uh, uh, kind of use. That's how I got when I said the, um, it felt, it was kind of weird, felt like the drowning sensation. Yeah. Um, it was because of that, and I know that wasn't my own thoughts. Well, there's a lot of work still to be done um, in terms of uh, the investigations and the cases, and stuff like that, and we'll go over more of that. I think we're gonna have a training session here coming up, and I think we're gonna do some investigations with you guys split up too, just to kind of try things a little differently. Well, hopefully the evidence will speak for us. Yep.
oh good work on this one so go over that and that'll be the next and I'll get with Chris and Austin and show them the results alright let's go get some Kool-Aid yeah I want a Snickers bar I'll sweet a dead end how appropriate <laughs> I don't particularly want to be separated from Alex because we're very good friends, but I can see how there would be, be situations where is it a good idea for Alex to go in one direction and me to go in the other? Me yeah. Um So that's something I think we'll, we'll, we'll flirt with that in the future. Um, I don't want to be separated from Alex totally. Uh, I guess I found out also that Chris then contacted uh, Alex, Jeremiah out and let them know about uh, some trash that was left behind and it just appeared a little bit that there might have been a little bit of a conflict going on there and with the idea circulating that Chris might join the group I don't want the guys and him off to a bad start especially Alex and him. I'll have to go over the evidence then and go back and hopefully I'll brighten up and uh, make the crooked tree straighter. How we're going to do this, okay, this is a training session, mock EVP session in Alex's apartment. You um, have to time stamp it, which is an important thing. State the room that you're in. So it be like, this is in the living room, Alex's apartment, uh, December 3rd, time stamp it, um, 7.53 p.m. Okay, so we are in Alex's apartment in the living room. We have Eric, Alex, and Jeremiah. And it is 7.53 p.m. And did I forget something? I don't think so. No. We are in Alex's apartment in the living room. Myself, Alex, and Eric. It is approximately 7.55 p.m. Did I miss anything? Date. I forgot date. And it is... It's the third. It's December, December 3rd, 3rd, about 7.55 p.m. Of what year? 2010. Okay, thank you. December 3rd, 2010, about 7.55 p.m. And do it, it doesn't matter which order you get into, but if it, it helps, helps you personally it helps to do me. it in order so it's repetitive. Yeah, me too. How many people are in the room with us right now? And then space it out before you pass it on to the next person. Give exactly the number of seconds that you would allow a response. Make sense? So like, okay. on average I do an 8 to 10, maybe 10 to 15 second wait. Okay. I think it'll help a lot seeing you do more also. Just, just... Oh, I think it has help. Yeah. And I'm hoping there's the more. Points. Jack, you'll be able to make the next one, and if Chris gets on board with us, you know, get some, mix a little more of the experienced people with the not so experienced. But when we're there, we have to try to remember um, look around, especially do maybe we'll incorporate a sweep on the next one for not just equipment that we may possibly leave behind, but also trash, uh, cups, um, snacks that we may have had, that kind of stuff, because really it's just not good. The main goal really is to get the equipment thing, the setup, the teardown, get that done. EVP sessions improve on those dramatically. And uh, cameras, I um, send it, you know, team members off with cameras, like the film cameras or whatnot, and those locations that are the hot spots, focus on those. Because uh, it was kind of frustrating. I looked, I got the film developed, and it was just all downstairs. I was like, oh, really? So, but that's all right. This time, it's, it's early on, so I'm not going to chew anybody out for it. <laughs> Oh, and Chris, he's shown interest in joining, and he's going to be probably shadowing on the next one that we have. Because he wants to be, like, case manager. He's, he has people skills to do that, and it'll free me up. Hey, Jackie. It's been a while. What's going on? So I just got a call from Jackie, and she called to let me know that she has to step down from Endeavors. No, it's understandable. No, it's fine, I understand. I had quite a bit happen, actually, since we got back from North Carolina, as it just became too overwhelming with everything else she has going on in her life right now. So it's good, she's prioritizing, and it's sad, however, to see her go. Um, 
just right in a point where we could really use some spiritual investigators on more of the spiritual side and uh, have some experience. Keep the light on for you. Okay. Hopefully we'll see you in the field again. Alright. Let the others know. Best wishes. We lost Jackie, gained Chris, so might work out in the end. And I do wish her the best of luck and perhaps we'll encounter each other again. Bye. We heard the EVPs that they they caught here uh, during the investigation. I wasn't really surprised that, I mean, shocked, because, you know, I've been doing this for a while, but to actually hear them from your own place, it's, you know, kind of gives you a little chills. Um, but they, they caught some really strong EVPs. You heard a lot of different things. And for a while after the investigation, for a few weeks, there really wasn't anything. But after that, it just, came right back to where it was and it was pretty good stuff wake up and see a shadow there is creepy but to actually sit there and watch it on the the interceptor where it's actually you can see it slowly going into the room and then just taking over the room that that was freaky because you I I didn't know what it was I mean it didn't seem normal to me because I haven't run across anything like that I actually woke up one night with uh, well one morning I don't remember any bad dreams, but Austin told me that I was having a pretty crazy dream and I woke up with scratches on my neck and it was like bloody scratches on my neck, my chest, and my back and I mean it freaked us both out. This is a very serious situation and I mean to have anybody live here after us, it, you know, it's dangerous and I was wondering is there any way that we can cleanse the house, you, get, you can get rid of whatever's here so that whoever comes next or while we stay here, you know, it's not going to affect us like it has been. Endeavors also provide services that are not just investigative only. We also can go in and cleanse places of unwanted spirits. Okay, so we're lighting this sage and sweet grass. It's believed to, uh, actually goes back to Native American beliefs, um, to clear out negative and unwanted spirits. We have to do smudging. We have to work our way around the house. You can see where you are going to sleep right now, so we don't know. You know, we don't know that we're going to have five o'clock and five o'clock. So we'll start upstairs first to groom my roof. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me lay down in the green pastures. He leads me besides still waters. He restores my the soul. earth is the Lord. You will receive blessing from the Lord. And be lifted up. He is the King of Glory. To know you, ways, O Lord. Teach me all your past. Christ, all the Holy Spirits and angels. Remove any negativity or unwanted spirits from this room. Replace with positive, desire, the spirits are in this room. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Consider my colleagues here and my tonight. trouble and forget all the points here, all the angels, Consider holy spirits, how many are my desired Lord, spirits, and, who's, and with what? Shoa, Bashan, Blashal. Ascend the hill, Lord, we ask you that you take the spirits that have been left here, bring them, bring them over to you, to your holy gates. Help them be on their way. In Jesus' name.
Right.